All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a wonderful weekend. If you missed the watch list yesterday, I posted it as a YouTube short, but we weren't expecting much this week, and man, was this a slow return back from the holiday. It was low volume, it was minimal movement, and there was minimal news, but now tomorrow we got something, and today... We got to talk about seasonality, the bonds, and then the data. So, Chad, I got a little bit out there. We're going to talk about September. I hope you're getting ready for it because now things are starting to heat up. But we do have data right after this week. But the question you should be asking for this week right here, right now, is very simple. Are we going to start moving ahead of the data or are we going to kind of chill out? And just don't forget, August was a lot of carnage. We had a couple of days, maybe a week, a week and a half of doing good, but they were big. But does all of that drama return? And I mean, look at the bonds. They came back down already. So, Chad, we got a lot to talk about. I got a couple of plays. We only made one play, and that's what I put on that short yesterday. Watching meta, I made a move on it. I flipped out, but definitely watching that week along or that this week alongside all of the chips but for the most part we are going to let it come to us and see if the data can move things and set us up other than that we're probably going to go with the plays as the week moves on so chad i got all of that for you what i need from you is a thumbs up on the video make sure you're subscribed and if you don't know we are live monday through friday 30 minutes before open youtube.com slash the stock market we will see you there in the morning morning it's free 99 and if you ever if you're like i can't find the channel youtube.com slash the stock market slash live if i am live god willing you will see me live too man so run it baby all right off the bat chad we gotta start with seasonality it's like the first real week of september however it's a short week but now everybody is talking does the pain from august resume and does it get worse why would anybody think that we have gone over this many times since 1928 september has dropped on average 1.1 percent for this stock market it is the worst month for the stock market, if you've seen seasonality this year, the market has followed along seasonality very well. Now, here is the counter argument is that when the market is up more than 10% year to date, which it is right now, usually September isn't a problem. Now, a lot of people are going to start talking about this, whether we end up green or red. One thing I said to keep in mind is that the final move of like really green or really red, it might be determined in the final days of the month. Kind of how you saw the final days of August really change how it was looking for like halfway through or three quarters of the way. So that's something you got to keep in mind about it. But now here is another portion or another counter example. And what people are saying is that, well, even though there's all this weird seasonality, I misspoke this on stream today. There is a weird record, 2014 to 2016, all three of those years, 2014, 15, and 16, September was a bad month for them. But then the following three years, 17, 18, and 19, September was actually golden. Regardless of 10% year-to-date or all of that, here is another September fun fact people are bringing up. But like I'm telling you, the real question that it boils down to is very simple simple. Does the pain from August resume or not? Is it going to be a guaranteed red month? I don't think so. Is it going to be guaranteed green? I don't think so. I think we got to get through these events. We're watching how the market is kind of shifting dynamics, reacting to what we're getting with the data. Again, good news, bad news, and bad news, good. You saw that last year. We ignored it for eight months, and now it's back, but that means the data might be shifting. That's where I think it kind of makes all of this story just a lot more okay September you got the data we have more data on the way in Powell 
it's going to be a toss-up, but this is what people are arguing about. We have the propensity for pain in September, and the question is if do we see that or not. So that's the first thing. The second thing now, bonds, like we talked about. We've talked about it every day, I think. Have we talked about it every day? I think we have, but especially recently, if you have not noticed the market going up since the end of August or around the same time we started bouncing, a lot of it started with the bonds calming down, especially end of the month here, that rate reprieve that we've been talking about, the long-term rates, short-term interest rates, they calm down here a little bit. That has been helped out here with the market, or you could say they've gone back and forth, but pretty much the bonds were helping out. Now they're not. Why? Why did they die over the last two days, especially today? It is because of the bond schedule. As we start getting into the end of the year, September after Labor Day, there is both companies as well as the Treasury. People are talking about the bond calendar being stacked and a bunch of sales leading to this pressure. So they're blaming it on flows now. Ironically, you even have people saying like Christopher Waller this morning that the Fed should be really cautious with with their next move, but you're watching the bonds move crazy. We've been watching tech stocks and everything saying, hey, what happens at 5%? Why doesn't this happen? Why has this happened or not? So it's a very important thing right now, but now as we're coming into the data, one thing I'd watch out for tomorrow is how do the bonds move? Do we keep seeing the bonds unwind? If we do, we might see more pain, and a lot of chads brought this up take a look at the yuan right now. It's not back to October. This is what I've been saying for everything right now. This is why we're not freaking out yet, but you really should be paying attention. The yuan's at a breakout level. The yen, same exact thing. It's not back to that 150, but that's weakening a lot. Dollar is, hey, it's been, I think it's the highest all year right now, but again, it is lower than where it was at like October. These are all 12 month charts right now. So it's like we should be paying attention. That's all the other things in the background. So that's why if the bonds start moving or if the data gets us reacting, this is what we want to pay attention to. But also at the same time, if all of these hit up here and then the data comes in very, very good and then CPI next week and then pow, then we're going to start to chill out. So don't let me get ahead of myself. But what I'm trying to say is watch this data tomorrow. Watch as it plays out with the bonds. This has been something going on. People are blaming it on the schedule and we should see a lot of pressure and now the next question beyond whatever the market does august september next question for the bonds is regardless of the schedule do we get economic data that makes the bonds go where they want regardless of flows or even if there's counter flows it starts getting yields higher or lower because of the data reaction so that's the next big thing that's the other thing we got today and then finally the data tomorrow. We had nothing today, and I'm saying today could potentially, or this week could potentially be one of those burn one weeks where we don't have much, but at the same time, if the ISM data tomorrow, if that wants to get things going, I mean, we very well could have a reaction. Like I was ranting about earlier, just if the bonds want to move to the data, that very well may cause things. But at the same time, too, we brought this up on stream today. Regardless of this data, you'll notice if you go through the calendar, there's a lot of European data. I think Bank of Canada, Australia, even tomorrow night, we're going to get more China news. There's a lot of news overseas that's happening for us. All we're getting is the ISM services, and then you're going to get a bunch of Fed speakers. So that's that's where I'm saying just pay attention. Otherwise, watch the global stuff. And it's either if things want to pop off, if that data could cause a reaction either here or overseas causes a reaction to our bonds or any of those other currencies and things get crazy. Maybe we start getting early fireworks in September. We start reacting ahead of CPI and Powell. Otherwise, we may kind of dance around short week post holiday it was already slow today that's why tomorrow will be very telling but then we go through it and then next week with cpi that's where all the action happens so chad that's the main breakdown tomorrow just watch for the data again good news bad bad is good other than that there will be other stuff to react to but like i'm saying i think we should take it slow here because september is going to run into a lot of events and like i'm saying before you know it the end of the year is ready. The end of the year. I said it right. Yeah, it's right. I butchered that. It was supposed to be dramatic. But yeah, so get ready. But let us get into the play. So 
right off the bat, like I said, I only made one play today. I made a move on Meta. We were talking about that yesterday on the short. I went with shares. I think at like 298, I only went with 50. I was going to try to play around with it a little bit, but it just like barely moved and then kind of melted up. Took like almost $3 a share. Got out of that. I'm so down to double dip on it. It really depends. Otherwise, riding out Intel, AMD, they started to come up. And one thing I did notice, I got to send up here on the screen. This is that biotech that we played from the beginning of the year on one of the original Padufa lists. It was like right around here. They came up. They've been doing great. But now here's the interesting part about them. They have data coming out. They just had earnings. That's why they're up. But they're moving. Yes, I got clapped on Outlook in a biotech last week. But this morning, I think there was like maybe four or five data points. Let me get it for you. So here's the list that we go over in the morning, all the pre-market movers, but VTRS, FDA tentatively approves, uh, phase three on Z-Lab, where is it, top line results, INSM, I'm telling you, there was like at least four or five of these, submission of clinical trial, WVE, then MXCT starts further clinical trial, I think there was even some bad ones too that were negative, uh, LARD, they won a... Uh, or no, this was uh, the, something else, but I think that's four off there. I think there was like two more, but what I'm saying is that there was a lot of FDA action, news, headlines, catalysts, whatever you want to call it. You're getting some of those, so that might be an area I'm going to be watching other than that, so I don't leave you with nothing. Like I said, if there's news-driven events, we may find opportunities, but I'm just, just keep your eyes on this one. It keeps coming up. We're going to get a lot of European data, but EWG, I mean, it's a little bit lower than the first time that we talked about Germany going under and why I'm bringing this up. Not only is oil back above $90 or it's getting there. I think Brent closed above like 91 today. You're getting commodities. They're not as much, but you're getting some movement. You're watching all the inflation pressures, but now with Germany, their data is just not looking good again, and we might get another recycle of that. So do I have a play on it? No, but I talked about this today. I am going to keep watching. It's more in line with does the data get us moving here in September or not and that's what I'm waiting for and I think all of these plays from Powell to Germany they'll probably all start moving in tandem because they're all at breaking points in tandem but Chad that is everything I hope you're ready for tomorrow it should be simple hopefully we get some volume but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Healthy ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shining. And whether it's being raised up or lowered down, I hope that you trust what is happening in the process. And that's the way it's not as cliche as it sounds. I pro Oh, wait, I, I got to hit you with the philo, but Chad, life is a blessing. You are blessed. You are living through a great time and generation, even if you don't understand it at all the time. Well, stop it. Stop it. Don't even get me started. But Chad, get that long term. Save 10%. You're ready to go. This week, the end of the year, we're either going to learn stuff very, very soon, or we only got to be a little bit more patient. But the question will be, will you be there and will you be in the game? So Chad, I hope you're ready for it all. I hope you enjoyed your, re your weekend, got some rest, and I hope you got the hype. This is it. Still no caffeine. But Chad, I love you. God bless you. I'm going to try not to damage anything on my way out or leave you uncomfortable upon my exit. So on that note, God bless you. I'll sit. I'll shake your hand. That's, that's it. I'm shaking the invisible hand. Is it weird? Is it weird? I can use this for a thumbnail. No, man, I still, okay, it's tried. I'm just, I'm going to leave though. Horn, I love you.